everybody, welcome to the Comic Gary Movie Show. My name is Deshaun, and today I am here to review Brad Pitt's Bullet Train. Y yes, Bullet Train has been one of those films that I've been kind of it's low-key anticipating ever since I started seeing the first trailers come out. I mean, the first trailer for this movie started to come out like almost like way back to when the Batman came out. I saw the first trailer for this. So this movie has been in all my anticipated. Plus, I love Brad Pitt. As many of you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I had a great time with that movie. But in particular, Brad Pitt's performance as Booth, my goodness, he was so electrifying. He was so charismatic and charming. He just has this... You know, he's always had this kind of charis charismatic charm to him, but he really has it in spades. It's almost like he's just honed in his, his like, everyman, like, like and it's crazy because a guy who's as handsome as him shouldn't be allowed to play the everyman, but he can do it. Somehow he can do it. He's just got this whole, you know, vibe about him that's just, you know, like, like, like Brad Pitt's just awesome. Brad Pitt's awesome. Like, I can't wait. I'm always happy to see Brad Pitt. He had his whole time where he kind of took a little bit of time away from Hollywood. Then he came back. And his big return was really, you know, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, it's great to see him back in a role like this, an action role like this. Um, obviously, you know, that's awesome. So, but the basic premise of Bullet Train is Brad Pitt is playing this agent that we don't really know who he works for. We imagine it must be American since, you know... There are things in the movie that hints that it is an American agency, you know, and he and he, he's tasked with something. His code name is Ladybug because the Ladybug is lucky because there's this whole thing about him being unlucky. There is this whole premise. There is this whole thing around him being unlucky. And, you know, he thinks that he's unlucky. I mean, he's he's so stressed out about it that he went to go see a therapist and he keeps quoting this therapist and talking about all the lessons he learned from this therapist throughout the course of the entire film. It's hilarious. Um, because he's just trying to be like, Woosa, I'm gonna put positive energy into the world. I don't want to kill anyone. I don't want to shoot anyone. I just want to... Because in the end of the day, all he is tasked with is going on this bullet train in Japan, grabbing a briefcase, and getting off. Unfortunately, he has stepped into an, a, a lion's den that he had no clue he was, where there are other assassins on this train. There are other people who have, um other ideas on this train all vying for this briefcase for their own reasons now he doesn't know about that he just thinks he's just going to go get a briefcase so it's kind of one of those classic stories it's one of like it's it's right in the same ballpark with like um what's that one movie like lucky number seven slevin or something like that there's a couple of movies like this where it's kind of just a <coughs> hodgepodge of different characters colliding with each other who have different reasons to be on it, who have different reasons to be in this situation. And it's almost like, who will survive this situation? And you, like I said, there's been a couple movies like that that I've seen, you know, in the kind of in that battle royale type style where everyone has their own reasons for being here and everyone's doing what they need to do. You know, you know what I mean? So that is pretty, you know, pretty abundant when you first start, when you first start watching it from the stylizing of it. Now, I, um, I'm going to start off with the positives about this movie, because I did enjoy this movie. I think it's a fun-ass movie, but it does have some issues. Now, I do, I will start off with the overwhelming positives, which is the cast. First of all, Brad Pitt, as the lead, is charismatic, as I said. His character ladybug i don't think you ever find out his name his character is so fun he's so enjoyable he's just like he has this jackie chan like i think someone even pointed this out he has this jackie chan-esque quality to his character where his character doesn't want to be here he doesn't want to fight anyone he just he's like he's just you just get the feeling he really doesn't want to be here he's not a bad like i mean he does some badass things he's not a badass like yeah yeah he's like dude i don't want to be here i don't know why you guys are trying to come after me you just get the feeling he's just like like, this sucks. This really sucks. This whole situation sucks. That he feels like a real person. And he feels like a real person who's in this situation. He's just like, this is ridiculous and this sucks. But it is what it is. You know, I, I think that's pretty, like, his character is entertaining. And honestly, he carries a lot of the movie. Honestly, he is the reason to watch the movie. And for nothing to watch Brad Pitt be just awesome. Other, other, a lot of other, all the, a lot of the other characters are great too. The twins, you know, are great. Um, I think like there are a lot of, um, um, there's a lot of fun characters in this. Even Michael, 
Um, God damn, is it Michael Shannon? Yeah, Michael Shannon shows up in this at a certain point to play a character that was pretty fun. Like I say, they all like the most of the cast is doing a great job, and it's a fun. And like I say, they are fun. They're having fun. The vibe, you feel the fun of this movie. Like I'm guarantee, I'm gonna go on a limb and say they had a blast filming this film because you felt it. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's having fun with their dialogue and with their characters. And, you know, I had fun with that. The action is, is also really good and really over the top at times. Really fun. Really creative. Really dynamic. If the action is very good, which is you should, which isn't shocking, because you know the John Wick, one of the John Wick directors directed is directing this. You know, John Wick slash Deadpool 2 director is directing this, so it's not shocking that he could come up with some very creative action sequences to put these situa to put these characters in. And really fun, really um, funny, sometimes really funny action sequences. Um, so that was great too. Um, I like that it was all tied. I like that it all tied together and that it all sort of in the end made sense the way it tied together. Um, I like the callbacks. Like I said, I love the callbacks. I like the way they call back to everything. They never put something out there that they weren't going to follow up on. So all of those things I loved. My issues with this movie are that sometimes it's overly stylized and it dips into style over substance. It heavily dips into the style over substance. And the problem is this movie wants so bad to be like a classic Tarantino slash Guy Ritchie movie, mostly like a Guy Ritchie movie. And if you've ever seen The Gentleman or Snatched or one of his other films, you know that a lot of the, the techniques that were used in this movie are techniques that guys like Guy Ritchie pioneered. The cutting to the past, the, like the slash cutting, the elongated dialogue, the over the, the, the over the top music being played in these random sequences and like, 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 like a lot of the movie did just felt like it was too overly stylized. Now I liked the style when it worked but there are sequences that are in slow motion that you're just like, I don't know why. There are, There's a sequence in this movie near the tail end of it that I'm like, well, that was kind of funny. Like, it was just like, okay. Like, there's a lot of that in this movie where it's just, like I say, it comes off as style over substance. And it's not the most original movie. I, I like, It's not the most original idea. It's not the most original concept. And there's not, re and like, and like, while there is something to be taught, learned in the end, you know, about luck and, you know, destiny and fate and, you know, those are the th kind of things they're dealing with here. At the end of the day, a lot of the characters ended up, like, particularly on uh, um, one character in particular, ended up just kind of just being there. And, like, it didn't even have to be there. There are a couple d characters who die in this, you know, who you're just like, I don't even... I didn't even care about those guys. And, the, and like I said, it does feel a bit overly stylized. And sometimes when they do their flashbacks and stuff, it can completely halt the momentum of the movie. And it happens so often that I noticed it. Um, other than that, and you know, like I say, I think the acting is, is very good. But outside of Brad Pitt's character, uh, you really, like, because it's a, it's a two-hour movie and it's moving at such a fast pace, you really don't have a lot of time to get to give a shit about most of the other characters. Like, don't get me wrong, you do care, but, you know, you care about Brad Pitt's character even more, but you never really learn much about him to begin with, except that he's going through some shit. The cameos that they have in this from certain actors that I won't spoil who show up, while one of them was funny... They kind of felt just out of nowhere, which is a lot of this movie just kind of feels like it's out of nowhere and less in a clever way and more in a ha ha kind of way. And overall, I ended up like settling on a seven out of ten for this film because while because I, I did enjoy it, I had a great time. Me and Seth would go see it. I had a blast watching it. But at the end of the day, there was just aspects of the movie that just it, it, you know like I, I, I'm just I just feel like like. One, it was trying. One, it was trying so hard to be like a Guy Ritchie movie. It was, was trying so hard, and I just and you guys know I like I saw the gentleman, loved the gentleman. Like it was trying so hard to be like that, or a Tarantino film, so and so hard to be like that that it was noticeable. Maybe you know you might not notice it because maybe you haven't noticed the stylings of those of those directors, but I do. So it was just like I noticed you're trying so hard to be like that. Also, you know. Also, I just it's just. 
The style overwhelmed a lot of the film for me. It really did. The style overwhelmed a lot of the film, and by the end of the movie, it did end up feeling like kind of a bit hollow, and it ended up feeling like, like, it ended up feeling like a cake, like a cake with frosting on it, and you take a bite out of it, and there's like, there's not much fucking actual cake underneath it. It's just like somebody made a frosting sculpture. That's kind of what it felt like near the tail end. But it was so, but it's still sugary. It still was a fun ride. But man, they really had, like, I mean, I don't know what else to have done, but they really probably should have pulled back a little on this stylized stuff, the flashbacks. It just, some of that stuff just halted the movie to a fucking standstill. Like, and it would just be like, okay, like, Spoiler alert, there's a whole sequence of the water bottle, which, while it was sort of funny, it was just like, dude, you just halted the entire movie to do this pointless thing, and there's a couple sequences like that where you're just like, I don't know how you're going to take it, but it did feel like that to me. Anyways, I still enjoyed Bleed Train, I'd still give it a 7 out of 10, just not as great as I hoped it would be. Anyways, thank you guys for joining the Comic Movie Show, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. Oops. <laughs>